I first had the idea of writing a requiem in 1983 or 84. And there were two impulses behind it. One was personal and the other musical. The personal one was a time of sadness, really, because my father died in 1983. And I wanted to remember him in music in some way, and preferably in a way that he might have enjoyed and appreciated. He was fond of music and he had a good ear, but he never had any musical training. So the kind of work I wanted to write would be one that, if he'd been sitting in the front row, he could have appreciated. I suppose it's true that most of the music I've written is fairly inclusive. I don't write for a clique of contemporary music buffs. That's not who I am and the kind of music that I've ever written. But it was particularly important, I think, in this case, to write something that could be appreciated by people everywhere. I suppose death is one of the great universals, really, that sooner or later we all experience bereavement and loss. And when people listen to a requiem, they're weaving their own thoughts and memories and experiences into the music and the words that they hear. So it's, it's very much a two-way piece and one to which people will always have a personal response. So that was really the personal side of it. And the musical impulse came when I was doing some research on the requiem by Gabriel Fauré which is a work I've always loved. And I heard in 1983 that the manuscript of this great work had recently come to light and was available for scholars to look at in the French National Library, the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. And I thought I must see this. At the time I was looking for a project to record with my choir, the Cambridge Singers. And I thought this is just something I absolutely must see for myself. And within 48 hours, I remember that I was on the plane in Paris and it was an extraordinary moment when the librarian in the manuscripts department brought me the manuscript of the Foray Requiem. Only four of its seven movements survive, the other three are unfortunately lost. But when these were handed to me and I touched them, I think that was the moment I thought I'd like to write a Requiem myself. That was really because, looking at the Foray manuscript, it doesn't look at all formidable or daunting. He wrote it in exercise books, music exercise books, that he'd probably borrowed um, from the Conservatoire in Paris, where, of course, he was the head of composition. And he wrote in quite neat ink um, each of these movements, and you could see in the penciled amendments the practical things that had happened in performance. His requiem was meant to be performed in church and at funerals. And on different occasions, different lineups of instruments were available. And you can see frenzied pencil changes that were made. You can see the corners of the pages dog-eared where he turned them over and over because he conducted the piece in his own church many times. And it brought history to life, really. I felt close to a work that I had always thought of as just something that's up there and out there. And for the first time, I thought, well, maybe I could write a requiem for myself.